Hello everyone! Thank you for watching another Wednesday Wellness here at Dr. George Holistic Health and Healing. And my name is Kai. I'm one of the members of the Team Love God. We also have here Ayn and Dr. George. And you'll hear them and of course see Dr. George in this video later on as we proceed on this recording. So we are the Team Love God and this is again Dr. George A. Holistic Health and Healing wherein we believe that to live with love for the, as the power of love is God. And our vision is to build a healthy, vibrant, and resilient nation. And how about our mission? Our mission is to empower ourselves to the optimal health of our mind, body, and spirit through the Creator model of healthcare, five pillars of wellness. And to know more about our curriculum and of course the five pillars of wellness we hope that you will also browse through all other videos that we have created and also in our website drgeorgej.com and our values of course we'll never forget about humility love and forgiveness all right so for our topic this wednesday um we will be continuing our book study for the um, book jesus ceo this is written by Lori Beth Jones and if you're not able to or you haven't seen the first um, two parts of this video that you have created for the Jesus CEO book um, kindly check all our recordings we have um, we also have a tab on our website for the Wednesday wellness videos so you can see all the videos that we have created there so Today, the topic is strength, or the chapter is the strength of action. So we'll be doing the first part, and we'll have another video for the second part. All right, so as always, we will um, do it starting with a prayer, and then an icebreaker, and then we'll proceed with the topic discussion. And before we proceed, let me just introduce Dr. George A. Saramuga, an osteopathic family physician, an ambassador for Christ, and also an active veteran. He will lead us with our prayer. Well, hello, Wellness Wednesday folks. We're glad you're with us again. And you know, we added our tagline, our motto, lead with love, as the power of love is God above our mission vision and our values so that's something like nike is just do it we're lead with love and that's what fuels us that keeps us going that keeps us in the moment okay and so just like kai Ein says we pray at the beginning of all our meetings and that's the best medicine out of psalms 147 Five, great is our Lord and abundant in strength. His understanding is infinite. And he does give us that strength, that power, that power of love is God. And grandpa wants to tell grandson, get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the meaning of life. That beautiful road to salvation. And so I'm going to take us to the icebreaker. Hello everyone. Hello Team Love God. So today's icebreaker is, what would you do if you were 10 times bolder? All right. Thank you for that, Ayn. And actually one funny thing <laughs> I thought of um, about this is, well, perhaps I will audition in a, um, it can be a worship ministry or I can audition in a talent search <laughs> um, show nice. Nice. Um, but well kidding aside um, perhaps I will huh, maybe I'll build my own empire I'll be a business tycoon here in the Philippines you know aspire to be a business tycoon in the Philippines and also be a CEO <laughs> why not you know, so how about you guys well you know Kai you're already a chief operations officer so you know, it's, <laughs> it's yes. indeed, and just like you talked about last week in terms of, you know, those I am statements and don't limit yourself, you know, about a home in the future and having your own place and they're all achievable goals. And a lot of that we're going to talk about throughout this, these next two modules. And for me, it'd be more, I love to 
to talk about the Lord, but I think it would be bolder and more eloquent and more in a more evangelical way. And and so just just feeling that spirit and letting that spirit show, you know, in all ways in my life, you know, it's so there's sometimes there's a little hesitation. And and so that would be that would be my answer. How about you, Ayn? Well, my first thought was uh, to take that dance lessons I've always wanted to take before. Nice. <laughs> but and I guess to start new things, really to innovate and take risks, and to trust more and have confidence in others. Yeah, now, ladies, you're young and vibrant and. The world's your oyster. And even for me, the world is, is still my oyster. And the Lord is giving us beautiful energy to to do his work. And so we'll let him guide us. Let's enjoy the journey because we can. And so we'd love to hear from you folks. So you, you on the bottom of this feed, go ahead and give us your your answers to that. And, you know, if you can if you can dream it, if the Holy Spirit prompts it to you, then there's no reason why you can't achieve it. So let's go to the active duty veteran salute. Veterans are the, the light at the tip of the candle, illuminating the way for the whole nation. If veterans can achieve awareness, transformation, understanding, and peace, they can teach us how to make peace with ourselves and each other so we never have to use violence to resolve conflicts again. Indeed. And so our objectives really are universal. It's because we always put God first. And our last one is we give God all the credit, give him the glory. So anything we accomplish in the middle, God gets all the credit. So we leave with love. We create a culture of kindness. We find pure peace in the present moment, moment to moment with Jesus Christ. It's there if we want it. And all of this that we're doing, folks, is empowering us to live fully alive, the glory of God, living fully alive, mind, body, and spirit, through the Creator Mono Healthcare, five pillars of wellness. And our guiding principles, God is the greatest physician. Genesis 127, God created man in his image, in the divine image he created him, male and female he created him. And prayer is the best medicine. Truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And he will even do greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. And whatever you ask me in my name, I will do to glorify the Father and the Son. That's out of John 14. We are all responsible for our health and our choices. You must know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit you have received from God. You are not your own. You have been purchased at a price. So glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6. All life and healing come from God. For I am the Lord who heals you. And so that's always important, folks, that we always talk about the pillars of wellness, that we talk about our guiding principles, our mission, vision, and values, and our tagline. Lead with love. The power of love is God. And as Kai introduced... We're on the strength of action. It was the self-mastery, the strength of action is the second portion, and relationships would be the third portion of the book. And so we'll do this in two, two parts, the strength of action. And so I'll start it off that Jesus, he saw every, as everything as being alive, having possibilities, you know, believing in yourself 100% and not doubting yourself. If that plant, that idea is planted in you, then allow it to grow and nurture it. And back to what Ayn says, more trust, more trust in others and more trust in, in confidence in your abilities. And, you know, when you're led by the spirit, there's where the Lord wants you. Doesn't mean that everything you do is going to be successful, but obedience is what he's looking for. And so the Lord wants us to be fully alive. If you're not living, you're dying. And so that's what he came on earth to show us a better way, didn't he? He wanted to teach, to love, and to heal. And that's what we're modeling our whole curriculum on, the Creator Model of Healthcare, to teach, love, and heal a better way, a better way of health. And so what opportunities have you written off as being dead? 
And so that maybe you need to take a step back, discernment, give it to prayer, and maybe you can resurrect those ideas. Retool them, rework them. You know, Jesus never gave up, right? He kept getting up on the way to the cross. And so we keep getting up. And so the de definition of success is getting up one more time than getting knocked down. And you can think of it as this way, as joyfully doing the will of the Lord. Okay, so Matthew 22, 22, 30, at the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. And so that's what the Lord was telling the Pharisees, right? When the Pharisees saying, well, this person's been married seven times. Who is going to be the rightful spouse in heaven? And Jesus is cutting through all of that political stuff and saying there isn't any marriage in heaven we're all there together we're all the same we're going to be like angels so he he cut the he cut the nonsense out if you will and so he took action you know jesus came to teach us a better way he came to give us the new testament to love god above all and love each other as god would want us to to love and he really simplified things for us. And so the disciples, they wrote things down. And if the, everything was written down that the Lord had did, all the miracles he did, all the teachings he did, the, there couldn't be enough books to contain all that. And you know how powerful Jesus' message was. Even at his death, his hands stretched out as far as they could. They had to nail him to a cross to keep from him from doing more work and more evangelizing. And Jesus says when he died, my work here is finished, but yours has just begun. And remember he said, mother, behold your son, son, behold your mother. And he was talking to John about his mother, Mary. Behold, honor her, take care of her. And so Jesus was all about passing on his work to the next and that was the disciples. He had a plan. A good leader always has a plan. We always talk about a team of God. Don't let perfect be the enemy of good. You have to have a plan, but you can't be afraid to execute that plan. So Jesus had his plan. His plan was to teach, to, to love, and to heal. And he didn't let people get in his way. He worked his plan. So you got to plan your work. And Jesus did. They planned on where they're going to go next, and they worked their plan. If they got run out of a certain place or they got to where they weren't allowed to minister, they would just take a step back and rework their plan. And so where did Jesus get the fine-tuning of his plan? Through prayer and discernment with his Father. He, we're watching The Chosen, and it's beautiful. Kai sent us the app, and we're, we're really enjoying watching that. And there's many times during The Chosen, the series about the life of Jesus, where he goes off by himself to pray. So that's a model for us to do, to go off to pray. He didn't know all the details, but he did know what the big picture was. That, and he would go and pray, and day to day would fill in the blanks. And so you got to consult your valued colleagues, Kai and I and help with this plan and get their input. You can't be a dictator. You have to build relationships with one another. And the plan sometimes can just start with one simple simple objective, lead with love. That's our tagline. Tag the vision is important. The mission, the value. So our vision to build a healthy, vibrant, and resilient nation. That's the big strategic plan out there. And then the mission is to be empowered through the creator model healthcare, five pillars of wellness, to live fully alive, mind, body, spirit. And then our values, humility, love, and forgiveness. That's why I always repeat them. And we repeat our guiding principles as well. And so you can't lose sight of where you're going and where you've been. Okay. So always have those. And so what is our plan? Our plan is to be ambassadors for the creator model of healthcare. 
teach people a better way, just like Jesus, how to be healthy, to teach, to love, to heal. Is it written down? Absolutely. We have a curriculum, web-based curriculum to create a model of healthcare. Is it clear? It's pretty clear to me. Five pillars, pretty simple, five guiding or four guiding principles, vision, mission, and values. Can we communicate it? We do it through our Wellness Wednesdays. Is it workable? We, we've been using this down in Guatemala, curriculum based. We're going to take it to Africa. We're going to take it through all out the United States and, and share, show, and be loved. And so that's how we we'll implement it through businesses, through hospitals, through clinics, through, through churches, through civic organizations. And we do that moment to moment. And we'll allow the, the Lord to, te to take us through that journey. And now I, or Ayn's going to talk to us about how Jesus formed his team. Take it away, Ayn. Okay, so he formed a team. Jesus wasted no time in forming a team. Uh, he showed his wisdom and power by the way he recruited his team of disciples. Even Jesus knew that he could not change the world alone. First, he began with a core that has something in common. So that's Peter and Andrew, James and John, the fishermen and taxpayers to Rome. And then he allowed diversity by including in Matthew, the tax collector. And then third, he, he did not fear tension and conflict mm -hmm. when he came to recruit Simon the Zealot, a hater of Rome. So we have this thinking that it is wrong or a sign of weakness to ask for help. But Jesus' teamwork was based on sharing responsibility. Whoever forms a team to carry out the best idea wins. Okay, so now we move on to, he called the question. Take it away, Kai. All right, thank you, Ayn. And well, yes, yeah, so he called the question. Um, you know, it is important that in every meeting discussion or even like when you're discussing inside the car, like which drive through, you know, you should um, go to. You know, there is always a final decision to make. And, you know, Jesus empowered people because he was willing to call the question. Remember his questions like, who do you think I am? Or who do you think you are? And what do you want? And where is your heart? You know, those questions. And Jesus asks many questions, perhaps because one of his mottos was, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. No, so truth is not always in front of us, waving at us. The truth is not always obvious. No, according to the book, sometimes it is wrapped in yards of our delusions and is hidden in the basement. So sometimes calling the question means um, taking the time to look into the people's, or the people's heart, you know, into person's hearts. So you might notice a friend or maybe a colleague, you know, who looks low in spirit lately. You know, we can ask questions like, is there something bothering you lately? Or do you want to have a cup of coffee after our work? You know, questions like that. And perhaps that person, you know, needs someone to talk to. And even sending a question like, what can I pray for you today? You know, that mm -hmm. um, actually opens up a lot of, of things is um, more than when we ask the person how are you today you know so the book says that if one of us is forced to tell the truth we will all be expected to reveal our true inner selves and then we would be free some of us are afraid you know to reveal the truth um, but then actually it is what will set us free the truth will set us free. So, with this, let me call Ayn again. 
um, for the next topic, which is he saw things differently. Okay, so he saw things differently. Jesus did not always perceive situations the way others did. Sometimes we can see only the underside of the tapestry with all its knobs and knots and mismatched threads. What do you see differently? Something that could or should be changed. So this chapter reminds us to see mistakes or look at things in a different perspective or mistakes as an investment in learning. And so Jesus could see both sides of the tapestry and he came to tell us how it would turn out. The Omega leader, which is Jesus, sees things that could be and should be and works to make them a reality. So in Mark 9, verse 35 to 37, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Whoever would be the greatest must become the least. What steps are you willing to take to make the necessary changes happen? So with this, uh, let's get back on Dr. George for He Broke Ranks. Absolutely. You know, and getting back to, you know, he wasn't afraid to make the call or make us make the call, right? He, you know, follow me, those two words. And were you willing to follow or not? Nicodemus, a Pharisee, wanted to, but didn't want to give up what he had. So he wasn't able to remember the young rich man wasn't willing to sell all his treasures and follow Jesus. And when we talk about breaking ranks, Jesus, he liked to poke the bear a little bit. He liked to stir up the water. Remember at the, the pool of Bethesda with Jesse, who hadn't walked in 30 or so years? And what did he say to him? He said, do you want to be healed? And he even repeated it. And so he called the question. And he broke ranks in the fact that he healed Jesse on Shabbat, on the Sabbath, which was against the, the Jewish law, the Pharisees, those, those brood of vipers, as Jesus would call them. And so that's why Jesus did it on Shabbat. On the Sabbath, he wanted to stir the water. It wasn't about that religious day, is that he is the Son of God and he was going to heal. Heal didn't matter on when, what day, what time we're at. And so putting things in perspective, remember God, love, love one another. And so he just challenged the authorities. He didn't report the news, right? He made it happen. And everybody throughout the whole land, who's this Jesus of Nazareth? All the miracles, all the things he was doing. In the world, we know negative information is free. We see it all the time. But we challenge ourselves to always be upbeat and positive, to lead with love. And you have to create that news, folks. You have to create that goodwill. That's what the world needs. And so Jesus knew how to do that. He knew how to step out of that crowd at the pool of Bethesda, healing the lepers, healing those and, and breaking bread and, and multiplying uh, bread and fish and feeding and, and driving demons out of people. So our Lord, he created the news and he broke ranks. He did it out of love. It's, now Kai's going to tell us about how he came from left field. Indeed. <laughs> All right. So he came from the left field. Um, remember the question from the Bible when they said that they found the Messiah and that he is from, Naz um, from Nazareth? They asked, can anything good come out of Nazareth? No. So like what the prophet Isaiah said about God's um, salvation plan 
Jesus, the Messiah, is not who people will expect he will be. So let me just read um, verses from Isaiah 53. It says there, Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. So Jesus was not exactly what the people had in mind for a leader. He's not a royalty nor a warrior. God played surprise when he sent Jesus as his salvation plan. And it's easy, it's very easy to disqualify ourselves as leaders based on external characteristics alone. We are influenced by a lot of factors such as the social media as to how or what we should look like. We are allowing external factors to define us and to tell us what we can do. Now our passion um, may be enough to qualify us as leaders according to the book. You know, the call to leadership can come from many directions and in many ways. There are already a lot of rugs and riches stories, for sure. You have friends, you have heard stories as such, and these stories proves that the call to leadership can come from many directions and in many ways. One example from the Bible is the shepherd young boy David who defeated Goliath. You know, that's really um, rugs to riches stories, sto kind of story. So if you will notice, almost every leader in the scripture doubted themselves at one point because they felt that they're not enough, they felt that they're not qualified, and they felt that they're broken. Moses do not want to lead, and he actually gave a lot of excuses <laughs> to God. No, so, but do not forget that we are called by God, and we are actually called by name by our name. Those who were called were given the strength to carry out their mission. So even though you feel like you're from the left side of the field, well, God is the one who will equip you with everything that you will need as you lead. You only need to trust Him and trust the process, of course. <laughs> All right, well so... Done. Now, let me call again Ayn for the next topic which is he branched out get it away and so he branched out jesus did not distribute his message just in his hometown remember uh he had a team of disciples to help him so jesus mission to reach out to the world was activated by sending out a group of people his disciples and God does not seem to want leaders to settle for a little piece of land spiritual or otherwise that's why the divine constantly urges us to lift up our eyes and see all the possibilities on the horizon and to shake off the dust and ashes from our minds and feet and get going so in today's modern world uh how do we do how do we distribute our message out there uh in team at team love god what we do is we do social media to reach a lot of people and the word branch or branches is mentioned more than 70 times in the bible jesus himself was called the branch of the lord Leaders must constantly look for ways to expand their vision, their influence, or, and their contribution. There are always more possibilities than our eyes can see. So, aside from Jesus forming a team, he approached and showed that he cared for others. 
Jesus taught by example that a real leader understands that the people they led are made up of unique people. So le like what Dr. George always says, uh, reaching out to where people are at. And so with this, I would like to share our vision at Team Love God, which is to build a healthy, vibrant, and resilient nature, nation. And now we move on to He Was Bold. Back with you, Kai. Thanks, Ayn. And indeed, so He Was Bold. Um, remember our... Um, icebreaker question earlier what would you do if you are 10 times bolder now jesus did not mumble or whisper his message jesus was bold as the book described jesus he shouted he stomped he flung tables and chairs at the temple he cried he groaned you know, everything he did made a statement about what he saw his mission to be he slammed into people's minds with acts they'd never seen or heard before. Jesus took the canvas of his life and painted a message very, very big enough, bold enough, and bright enough for everyone to see. Because he is not afraid, even you know, if, if for the Pharisees to see the miracles that he's doing. As Dr. George says, even it's, if it's Shabbat, he will do the work of his father. Remember at the age of 12, he already went to the temple and he already started teaching. We need bold leaders and leaders who are bold about what is the truth according to the word of God. A leader who is bold about what is right and what is wrong. A leader who is bold to start something new that can be beneficial to, for the many. It is a leader who, hesitate, uh, who hesitates is lost. Not to decide is to decide because mm -hmm. as we said also earlier there are decisions that we need to make and as we go to our next um, topic which is he boiled it down um, Jesus boiled down all laws to this one love God with all your heart and mind and soul and your neighbor as yourself because remember, um, they've actually viewed the Ten Commandments, the law, you know, for Moses, in a in a different and actually in a wrong way. That's why Jesus came, you know, actually not for the law, but really to give us to boil everything down into that one law, which is to love God with all your heart and mind and soul, and to love your neighbor as well. Um, Jesus distilled thousands of teachings, writings, and theories into one sentence. Jesus boiled it down. The book says, if people could understand their core values, they would save years of doubt, confusion, and misplaced energy as they try to find direction for their lives. So here at Dr. George A., um, we boil down what we're doing and what we want to achieve into our tagline, into our mission, and vision statement let me just repeat them all again our tagline is to lead with love as the power of God is love and our vision is to build a healthy vibrant and resilient nation and our mission we always say this in every video that we create our mission is to empower ourselves to the optimal health of our mind body and spirit through the creator model of healthcare five pillars of wellness so all of these, as we you know, when we boiled them down into all these taglines, vision, and mission, these actually help us to be directed to where our path should be. Whenever we do our strategic planning, you know, we make sure that all are aligned to what we have shared with you, to our tagline, to our vision, and our mission. So leaders identify, articulate, and summarize Concepts that motivate others. So they boil down they boil down concepts to an understandable idea. Alright, so now let's go to 
Dr. George <laughs> for the next topic, which is he was visible. Ayn and Kai, outstanding review of, of those slides. And Thank you. you know, when you can keep it simple and always focus on the prize, right? The prize is salvation and the vision, mission, and our core values. And then we have our guiding principles and the creator model of healthcare and the five pillars of wellness. You always go back to that. If you're not sure where to go, go back to that core. And that's having that vision, having that purpose, and, and being able to articulate it and be able to motivate people along those same lines. And so Jesus was visible. He was visible from town to town on the mountaintops, transfiguration. He was visible driving out demons. He was visible in healing people. He was visible at the Garden of Gethsemane when all the Romans came and were going to arrest all the disciples because they weren't sure which one Jesus was, even though Judas went and gave him a kiss and said that's what one would be. He's, he said, let them all go. Let, you want me. I'm the one you want. He didn't put up any defense. And so Jesus was confident. Jesus was visible. Jesus was bold and he was decisive. And he stood out in a crowd and he took the accountability. He said, you want me. I'm the one that you want. I'm Jesus of Nazareth. And so as Kai said, at the age of 12, he was in the temple. He was visible. He didn't keep a low profile. He wasn't afraid to poke the bear. He wasn't afraid to stir the water. He wasn't afraid to call out people that were hypocritical, the Pharisees, the brood of vipers. And so he had his light shining, and we're shining our lights as well. We're not putting them under the basket. Remember, a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. And the beautiful words that he said, and the word became flesh and, de and dwelt among us. And so I'm going to talk to us about how Jesus was willing to do an end run. Okay, so he was willing to do an end run. Huh? Leaders often must use innovative means to deliver a message or accomplish a goal. So in the book, there's a story about a woman who started the organization Mothers Against Drunk Driving or MAD. Her name is Candy and she complained to legislators that a convicted drunk driver with a prior history of DUI, killed her teenage daughter and walked away unscathed. So instead of her taking her grief and going home to cover it up, she organized a group of mothers called MAD and set the fields on fire. She held press conferences, she passed out red ribbons, she formed support groups, and she gathered statistics. Um, and the Bible, uh, an example of this is King David, who had fallen into disgrace. So David was so upset with the young man that he refused even to see him, his son. So this went for some time until Absalom, his son, was desperate to see his father. So finally, Absalom announced, if he will not hear me, I will set his fields on fire. Sure, in, sure enough, Absalom set the fields ablaze. Not until then did David recognize how much he had hurt his son with his unforgiveness and the two were reconciled. So if you believe you have a just cause and important message or a key contribution to make, you will be innovative to get there any way you can. So if you are, are determined to do something, you will always find a way to accomplish it regardless of obstacles. So with that, back to you, Dr. George. Okay, I thought that's what you were going to say, Ayn. I just wanted <laughs> to say it. So, so patience, Dr. George, patience. Absolutely. You know, bold, decisive, and, and Jesus wasn't afraid to stir up the water. And uh, he had that long view. He was only going to be there three years. You know, he 
didn't know exactly when he was going to have to die on the cross and and re and, and res be resurrected and be at the right hand of the Father. And so, but he listened to his Father. He was obedient. He was obedient to death on the cross. And so he had the big picture, the long view, and he had to instill that in his disciples. I had to instill the vision of Dr. George J. Holistic Health and Healing to build a healthy, vibrant, resilient nation and have buy-in from Kai and I and other people that we're working with. And people understand it and they get it. And so when you come up against a step or a block, you got to sometimes step back and relook at that long-term vision. And maybe you have to do an end run, like I said before, and do something different. And then prayer and discernment. You know, so it could be like the opportunity is like staring at the knees of the giraffe. You know, how do I get there from here? This seems impossible. But getting back to what Kai said, you know, we have the that power. And if God plants that seed, if he picks us, as she said, he'll equip us. He'll give us everything that we need. We just have to have that faith and that trust and his timing. His timing is not always our timing. And so that's where we can find pure peace in the present moment, moment to moment with him and allow him to guide us on that path and allow this process to mature when it's supposed to. Just like when Jesus you know, said, a woman, it's not my time, you know, at the, the Feast of Cana when he turned the water into wine. But the, his mother kind of pushed his time a little bit forward, right? And so sometimes you got to be able to push the bear and push forward as well, too. And not be afraid to be bold and be decisive. Okay? All right. That was a great review, ladies, on Jesus CEO. And I thank you for all of that. And that was on the strength of action. And we'll have part two coming up next week. So with that, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to put it here on the, on the video at the bottom of the video in the comments section or you can email us and then i'm going to turn this over to kai and she's going to talk to us about our next video go ahead sister kai all right thank you dr george and that's right if you have questions or any comments about this book review please do let us know by just typing down your comments below this video and for next week as we said we have divided this chapter the strength of action into two parts the second part will be next week july 14 2021 and we hope that you will stay tuned you will um visit from time to time or you will um, you'll turn on the notification for um, our facebook group which is the creator model of healthcare community so that will be next week. She's a CEO, Strength of Action, continuation of our book study. And also, please, uh, to be updated of every content that we are sharing. So please do follow us and like us on our social media platforms. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. We also have on YouTube, as you see in your screen. And also... For all other resources, for daily inspirations, for daily devotions, please do visit drjorge.com. You can download for free all the handouts that we have there. And you can print them out and post them on your wall or share it with other people. Again, just visit drjorge.com. Okay, so thank you again, everyone, for your time. Thank you for watching this video. And the entire team would also want to send their gratitude. Absolutely. Well done, Team Love God. The power of love is God. We're leading with love. And thank you, many and many blessings to all. Thank you, everyone, for the opportunity to share, show, and be love. Indeed. 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 Take care, everyone. Good, Good night. We love you.